Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Well, once again, working on my Final Fantasy XIV blog post, and once again, I'm at a part where um, I want to talk about uh, that uh, during my stream, or during my stream earlier today, that uh, I just wanted to talk about the uh, the team that I was playing throughout most of it. So, but like usual, it's just easier for me to just make a video about it and then just post it up rather than have to type like a whole mile long mile long walls of text trying to explain how the build works and stuff like that so in situations like that it's easier to show than tell so and then like usual um i'm gonna have some music going in the background um this time around it's gonna be a band called gadfly their apronic album um normally whenever i whenever i play music on these uh videos i they're usually just instrumental they're just instrumentals. Well, this is going to be one of those rare exceptions, but I've just had this album in the... I've, just, I've had it playing in my head for like the for all, throughout the past few days. So, so yeah, I just figured I'd go ahead and just play it here. So, go ahead and fire that up. Okay. So, um... Let me find it. Oh. Oh. So... Today's stream, um, this is this is what I was playing mostly. It's kind of a variant of a of a team I was uh, a team I was playing during a uh, during the class trial. Um, might still be up. Okay, so I guess it ain't gonna let me. Okay, so. Uh, guess that didn't work. So let me go back over here. So yeah, but it's a it's a green war gear, a green war gear team. Um, and the the name Men in Tights. After it just kind of it was just the first thing that popped in my head. It's a movie about Mel Brooks, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. There's like a part of there where uh, Robin Hood and his merry men they're they do a musical number, like, we're men, we're men in tights, and like, later on they do some line dance, and da 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 you know, it's like, it just, it, I just thought it kind of a, kind of a, kind of a funny, thought it'd be kind of a funny name to have for this team, but, anyway, um, I'm sure Todd Greenwood is gonna be, uh, something that a lot of people are familiar with, like, some of these other, some of these other troops, uh, Chalcedony, or Chalcedony, however it's pronounced. Um, I forget her name. She's uh, the purple version, but deals damage, creates gems, boosted by uh, War Gear allies. He also uses green, so it loops. Um, 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 then I got I got the Doom Glaive in here. Um, deals damage to all enemies. Converts uh, brown gems to doom skulls, and then um, it also it also creates a leaf storm. It also entangles the first enemy. Now, there was all for a short time, there was actually an alternative weapon that I was using. Um, I didn't didn't find it as effective. Hopefully, it'll make it a little easier, and I. I think you get the weapon from one of these, uh, one of this week's events. Um, because I have a terrible memory and I can't remember the name of it. I just knew that it was green and yellow. Hopefully I can still find it. Looks like I have to type down... Yeah, Skulking Shot. Like I said, I've got a really bad memory. I forget shit almost as quickly as I remember it, so... Yeah, so I was using this for a brief period of time, and it is a good alternative. Because, one, it's cheaper. The Doom Scythe requires 18 green mana. Whereas a Skulking Shot requires only 14, but it can, it can also be yellow as well. And, um... It's basically a Doom Sky's Light. It damages one enemy, basically um, 41 plus 24. Um, 
It gives everybody my team two mana. It entangles the first enemy. So... Something else I was wanting to say about this weapon, too. And, uh... In the, uh... The web... The web debuff... It's, uh... It doesn't affect me as much. Because you're always gonna deal... Uh, 24, 24 damage to a target because of the, uh, the boost. Of course. Just now, no, just now, notice this. War gear. Fortunately, I can't, uh, I have no use for red, so... So, yeah, about the same. It's still gonna deal 24 damage. Boost ratio times 6. 6 plus 4, or 6 times 4 is 24, so yeah. And then, um... And then Persistence. The big, the big one is, um... Actually, I just, I just noticed this, yeah. This is almost like my uh, rock band team, which is like um, all uh, Nexus troops. You got skull damage reduction, and you're also dealing a. Uh, oh, never mind. I actually read the whole thing. I'm dealing double skull damage versus green enemies, so. But the big one here is on the bottom. You're um, giving four to all stats of Warrior allies when you're on four or five matches. And then, Persistent Strike. To an uh, damage to an enemy and a random enemy. Basically, it means um, it hits twice, and then double damage on a on a green enemy. So this guy here could also be a good way to. I've been using this guy to actually finish my matches because with all um, with all the green matches that you're gonna get from Todd, eventually. You're going to have this guy's stats high enough to where you could basically one-shot the last, uh, the last troop you have to kill. So. And then, um, banner, it should have been green and brown. Yeah, mushroom banner. Nobody's using red, so no big deal. And then, um, spirit walker. Another nice little touch here, spirit drain. It drains two mana. Whenever, uh, whenever I cast a spell, so this is um, this could actually uh, shut down or at least partially shut down firebomb teams. I was doing that all, all, all during PvP. I fight a firebomb group, but uh, they always start with full mana. But every so often, I'd uh, train two of two mana from one of them. And then um, there are war gear as well, and I got a long. Looks like I got a long ways to go to get 250, so. But let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and uh, take this out for a walk. I'm gonna demo a game or two. Alright, so in here, um, as you probably expect, the big goal is to get green and brown matches. And I guess since I'm here, um, I'll go ahead and say too that this team is by no means infallible. So yeah, it's got a fair amount of drawbacks, but um, I'll show them as I'm as I'm playing. And then um, again, you're looking for green and brown matches, but you're also looking for some four and five matches as well. Um. I would probably say any color but green. Even if you have like a green five match, unless um, unless he's not up or something, I usually leave the green gems on the board. So makes it more likely to get a four match when I cast this. But otherwise, any other color, it's fair game. Because remember, every time you get a four or five match, everybody's stats increase by eight.
All right, so looks like we're good to go. And, and potential here is one of the other big drawbacks of the build. Those that have seen me play uh, teams like that have Queen Beatrix, for example, the free matches team. Well, this team has that as well. Oh, and um, you don't want to aim for the guy that's entangled. He needs to stay up as long as possible. Okay, so looks like um, the glaive's up. Now, you typically you want to wait until uh, the combination of skulls and brown gems results in at least a four match. Sometimes I'll do it earlier, like if the top guy here, if, if he's just about to go, I might go ahead and use the glaive anyway. That way, so when you kill him, he'll automatically entangle the next guy in line. I believe skull matches also count. If you can find uh, four and five skull matches, it also increases our stats as well. So. There we go. And there's a drawback, because... If you can't get a four match out of that ability, you've just handed your opponent a bunch of free green or a bunch of free green matches. Same issue, same big problem I had with my free matches team that I went that I did a I did a demo of. If you don't get a four match out of those out of all those gems you created, you're you're you basically giving your opponent a huge leg up on you. So, but I think what I'm going to go ahead and do instead. Since again, this ability hits twice. I'll just go ahead and oh, devour on him. Oh. It does it for that. Oh, and then this here. This is a uh, this is brand spanking new that they've added in. Just rando chance stuff. Gain brown mana, lose. Uh, I don't really need the brown mana. So, once again, looking for uh, green and brown matches or... Yeah, there we go. Stats are going stats are going up and up. Remember, it goes up by eight every time. Oh, did you notice that? Gob Chomper was at full mana and he had that ability ready to go. But But again, because of um, because of Spirit Drain, he can't cast that ability now. So. I see uh, three three matches, so I'll go ahead and cast it. There we go. And then we'll finish them off. Chop. And then one more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try a PvP battle. Yes, we have another drawback to this team. There is no Leprechaun in the group. 
there's nothing that explodes gems on here. So I basically have no mana generator in this group. Other than Todd, but... You gotta get him to 12 first. So yeah, it looks... Looks like we have no green or no uh, green or brown matches, so gotta take what the game gives me. So, in situations like this, if I think it was gonna be a long slog to get his ability up, um, I'd oftentimes just uh, just end the battle and start over, or just do the battle over. Excuse me. Gotta re-rack the whole board, see if I get something better. matches. There's one. I see it. and finish him off and then that should do it see so let's go ahead and do a pvp battle where yeah this team does this team does struggle a fair amount and um and yes this um this team does struggle even against firebomb groups in fact during my stream earlier my team nearly got killed by one so, yeah. But again, it put it. It's one of the biggest drawbacks to this team, and my uh, free matches team has that same problem. If you can't get a four match out of all the green gems that Todd's uh, generating, your opponents could have a whole lot of matches to use against you. So, it's, basically, it's a high risk, high reward team. Yeah, a lot of them. Right, so time to go to work. And then, before I forget to say this yet again, basically, the more green gems you already have on the board, the more likely you're going to get a four match out of this. So, but if you're ever in a situation, and I've been in many, where if if you have hardly any green gems on the board already, you're going to have a tough time getting a four match out of this ability, so... And once again, this should instantly finish off the last guy. Because remember, that ability hits twice. Okay, so, and this is definitely one team that that uh, my team struggles against. For those that don't know, yeah, there ain't no freaking way. But Savage Hunter, the guy at the top, uh, plays Hunter's Mark on enemies when doing skull damage. Now, I believe Savage Hunter works the same way a troop called Web Spinner works. Um, mechanically, it places a Hunter's Mark on you first. Then, um... Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, misreading, I'm misreading this. Maybe, um, I'll probably give a better explanation 
if I ever do a web spinner fight. But yeah, bas basically, basically it places a debuff on you first, then this applies the skull damage afterwards. So, and, and Hunter's Mark, troops take uh, double damage from skull gems. So, yeah. And since my whole team is green, I am totally steering clear of this. But, Dara, and then this guy here, the Great Worm, create two skulls when my turn begins. Every turn, and because he has two of them, four skulls are going to pop up on the board someplace. Then you got Sister Superior, meaning that Entangled that I'm going to put on him immediately is going to fall, is going to get cleansed right off um, shortly after. So, yeah, we're going to have to steer clear of that one. And I always... I always avoid the elementalist battle, so I'm not really in the mood to pick on the little guy. I only want to do that if, if I'm a, if I'm on a losing streak. So let's just go ahead and refresh the board. Oh damn! Okay, this is another variant variant right here, and he's gonna ignore armor or skull damage, basically. He deals what's called true damage, which all the damage goes straight to the life and ignores the armor. So, yeah. But since I'm going to have Entangled on him right off the bat, let's go ahead and try this one out. Not seeing any other brown or green matches anywhere else, so hope the tangle stays on for another turn. Okay. Eight green gems. I'm looking at the upper left corner. Yeah, a little bit iffy. Well, took care of him, but but like I said, like I said a few minutes ago, in this team here, he's he's gonna pop up six skulls every turn. So and as you can kind of tell. I forgot to show that at the start of the battle. That can that can actually work against him. So he basically shot himself in the foot. So, well, won that one. Ah, here we go. And and you guys might have seen this. You might have seen me. Um, I think I actually did a did a team. Did a video on this. Chalcedony, she's the brown version of the green guy that I'm using right now. Deal, uh, damage a target and creates uh, brown gems, and she uses brown, so she can loop this. And then on top of that, so yeah, we got a, we got a tough one here. I don't. Okay, and then this is also a long-standing bug with this game. Some of the, uh, some of these bat, some of these teams, they'll, uh, they'll pop in Lance Knight at the bottom. But yeah, it's a, it's a bug that, uh, the game devs have done nothing to rectify. I think the, uh, the bug popped up some odd years ago, and to this day, they haven't done anything to fix it. So. But yeah, um. We got a, another tough team here. And 
as obvious as it might sound to any you people, um, being entangled, all it means is they deal zero skull damage. She can still loop this ability over and over on me as much as she wants, so... I'm definitely not out of the woods yet, but I got a feeling uh, we're looking at a game over here because the ability is about to go off. She got hers up before I got mine up. So... Holy shit! Yeah, I got super lucky there. Like I said, just like what I did in the past few battles, she can do an infinite loop with this. So... Okay. Oh. Time to go to work. 17. Gotta be able to keep this going. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cast this, if only just to get uh, Zernobog and Tangled. There's a couple of three matches there, so or I could just kill them all, right? So, I guess I made a bad call there. Or I could just do this. And again, it hits twice, so it killed them both. So, yeah, made it, yeah, actually won that one. And Frost Mage, um, with this particular team here, yeah, Frozen will kill this build, especially since um, all four of my members use green. So, I've said this in other videos too, but the way Frozen works in this game, maybe it'll show. It's actually worded wrong. It says a frozen troop's uh, spells of mana no longer give extra turns. Really, what it. It's not the troop himself that's frozen, it's the color he represents. So, what that means is, again, since my whole team uses green, if you can freeze just one troop, you've essentially frozen the entire team. So, yeah, definitely gonna have to steer clear of this one. Hey, this team's almost like mine, and uh, and since he's here, I'll talk about him a little bit. But um, I've actually uh, I've actually considered having Wolfgarok in my team as well, but you kind of if you if you manage to kill somebody with this ability, he'll devour a random enemy. But uh, on the downside. You're only giving two attack and magic to everybody else when you match four or more, whereas with persistence, you're giving, you're increasing all stats of everybody by four. So, but I think of something else too. He requires 22 mana. Now, you can do that with three colors, green, red, and purple, but the thing of it is, is I'm only putting out green mana. That was, yeah, that was the other reason I just, I just thought of that. So, I would have to come up with 22 mana. That's gonna be a lot harder to pull off than uh, Persistence. I only need 11. So, it's much easier to get this up than it would be to get Wolf Garok's ability. Doesn't look to be super difficult, although I've never seen this weapon before. Sword's Edge. Oh, he's blowing up blue gems. Oh, Mogram Woods. Yeah, kind of all over the place on this one. Maybe needs a DJ screw to help her out. I guess, like I said, it looks like that team there is a bit all over the place. But of course, right when I say that, the team's probably gonna come over and kick my ass. Like I said, I almost lost, I nearly lost to a firebomb group earlier during my stream, so. Like I said, this is by no means an infallible team. And then this will probably be my, probably be my last battle here too. Oh, 
There it is. Staring at me in the face. Alright, so looks like we are ready to go and 12. Gulp. Oh uh, yeah, but and I just now thought it I just now realized it. He's using Todd as well. He is public enemy number one, so. Might have messed that up. Should have left those uh, five skulls sitting up there. So he's gone. Definitely the next guy on the list. See what we got here. 139. I might be able to do this. Almost. Almost, but not quite. So we'll go ahead and do that instead, though. Alright. And yeah, it does this from time to time. The game will freeze up for a short period. But it always comes back. So, also, I want to look at something else over here, too. Oh, okay. I thought I got that weapon. I'll do, um, real quick, I want to look at the, um, Spirit Walker class again. I think it's here. Yeah, for those, also, for those that don't know, in this game here, for classes, each one has a mythic weapon that you get. Whenever you get 250 wins while using that class, um, create eight spirit gems. For those that don't know, spirit gems are classified as blue gems, but with an added bonus that whenever you match them, um, you'll uh, you'll drain two mana from a random enemy, and you and you gain an extra turn on top of it. So this looks like a pretty good weapon here, right here, or. And this is something else that's that's kind of new in this expansion. We also don't know if Opatia is a new kingdom that came out like a few days ago, I want to say. And the troops in there, they're totally unique in this regard. I, I can't really think of any other troops that have this where you can choose between two different abilities. Most other troops, if you if um if there's two or more abilities, they're chosen randomly. But in this, but uh. In this one here, you can choose yourself. So, pretty neat mechanic that I played with a little bit. I kind of like it, even though for some of the troops that I played with, 90% um, of the time, I always went with one and not the other. But anyway, but yeah, same thing here. Uh, create spirit gems and gain an extra turn, or you can deal 75 true damage to a random enemy. So, it's definitely worthy of picking up right here. But otherwise, um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Um, I just want to do a quickie dicky demo showcase of this team. So i got to get this uploaded and processed and all that other good stuff. And I'll be go getting back on my uh, Final Fantasy XIV blog post. So, But otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that. And I'll see you all next time. Bye now.